So in this first special feature for palette effects, we're going to be talking about color tools. Now in palette effects, I talk a ton about color theory, color relationships, how colors interact. But one of the things I don't really target much in there is actual color tools. Okay. So we have these individual color tools that are in Photoshop. And one of the biggest questions I get is Blake, how do you know when to use color balance or the channel mixer or the curves adjustment layer or the selective color, or the hue saturation? When do you know what to use where and how do you use them? <laughs> it's kind of confusing, right? Well, each individual person, I think, will, will take and gravitate towards one more so than the other. But really, what we need to do in order to decide what tool we need to use, we have to break those tools down and see what tool actually does what and how it does what it does. So what I've done is I've taken each one of these adjustment layers that you can find here in Photoshop, all of these adjustment layers for color, and I've put them in their own individual group. And these are really your finite color adjustment tools, not really like your vibrance and saturation adjustment or none of those, but your, your ones that can get into individual colors and, and target colors. That's the tools that we're talking about. So those tools are in order of what I call precision, color balance, channel mixer, curves, selective color and hue saturation. But before you freak out, because you might be one of those people that says, hey Blake, I can get really precise with the channel mixer. I get it, you can get pretty precise with these things. But what I'm talking about, precision in terms of how fine tuned can you get with targeting your individual colors and modifying them without masking, without blend modes, without opacities, without jumping through any hurdles, how precise can you get with each one of these tools? So in terms of precision, we're gonna be talking about global adjustments where something that affects the entire canvas, the entire image that you're working on and local adjustments, which are things that only affect very small areas of your image based on what you select. So global versus local. And now we have the individual tools that we're gonna to look at. I've also created a PDF document for this that you are free to download. If you're right now on the palette effects page where this video is being presented, you can click on the link below and that will download it if you're in YouTube watching this, look at the description. In the description, you will find a link that will take you to an area where you can download that PDF and have those notes as a reference as you go through. Okay. So first of all, what's color balance? Well, color balance is specifically for balancing the colors in your image as the tool implies. Thank you, genius Blake. What it's for is it's actually for more like color temperatures. So if you look at your at your image here and you look at what you can actually edit with this color balance tool, you see you have shadows, midtones and highlights. So we can actually target individual tones with this color adjustment, which is really cool because sometimes we can only target individual colors. So if you look at what this color tool is mainly for, it's mainly for balancing the colors within your tones of your image. So it actually takes precedence on tone more so than color, but allows you to manipulate the color within your tones. So before I lose you there, let's go here to shadows. So we can see that our shadow areas are going to be darker areas of our image. And what we can do here is we can say, you know what, I'd really like my shadows to be a little bit warmer. So we can warm up those shadows by adding a little bit of red. Or if you want to cool them down, you can go into those shadows and say, let's add some cyan and maybe come over here and add a little bit of blue and really cool down just the shadowy areas of our image. Now, by their nature, it doesn't show us what a shadow is. And you're also going to see this box right here that says preserve luminosity. This is kind of like the color blend mode built right into this adjustment layer. Okay. If you don't say preserve luminosity, what's going to happen is as you make these color adjustments, they're also going to be adjusting the tones underneath as that color is adjusted. If you say preserve luminosity, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the tonal values that are underneath this color balance and say, well, he really does want us to make sure that the lights remain lights and the darks remain darks, but let's add these colors to it. So one of the things that I would suggest is if you're really trying to color balance your photo correctly here is I would make sure that you have this preserve luminosity checked so that all of those luminance values underneath of those colors remain the same and do not change. And all you get here is a nice color edit. So that's with our shadows, but then we can go to our highlights and say, you know, there's a little bit too much yellow in these highlights. Let's go ahead and add some blue to them. Maybe add some cyan to them and we'll see what happens with green and magenta. Maybe warm them up just a little bit as we remove some of that yellow. So you can see the before and the after here. What we've really done is we've used the color balance tool. It's a global tool. It globally edits your entire image, but it locally edits your, midtones, highlights, and your shadows. Okay. But we don't necessarily know 
what a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow is, unless we intuitively know that this dark area is a shadow and this light area is a highlight. We don't really have a way to see those highlights, those shadows, those midtones that we're editing. It is a very useful tool for color temperature balancing. And actually, when you think about it, if you come into Photoshop, you don't really like in Adobe Camera Raw. If we were to go into Adobe Camera Raw right now, in Adobe Camera Raw, we have temperature and tint right here, right? Well, where in Photoshop do you see a temperature and tint adjustment? You don't. This is essentially your balancing tool and your temperature and your tint to get your image balanced out correctly with your midtones, your highlights, and your shadows. So instead of it globally editing your image with that temperature and that tint, it gets micro into those midtones, shadows, and those highlights. So moving on to our next level of least precise tools, we have the channel mixer. And before we freak out, like I said, inherently the channel mixer tool is not the greatest for very fine tuned editing of colors, but it is very good for other things. I like to use the channel mixer for masking to make very precise masks, but I don't necessarily like using it for my color adjustments. And a lot of people do like using the channel mixer, so I'm not discrediting it, but what I'm saying is that of the tools that you have here, there are more precise tools for much more dynamic color adjustments. But let's take a look at the channel mixer. What does the channel mixer do? Well, if you look here, it says we have our output channel is our red, green, and blue. And what this does is it coincides with these channels that we see right here in our channels palette. So if we look at these channels, what this is basically saying is that we can go ahead and reduce the percentage of red that is in the red channel by decreasing the amount of red in there. We can increase the percentage of green that exists in the red channel by increasing this. Now, where this is for fine-tuned color editing, and what you'll see here is that this is also kind of like tint and temperature and color temperature balancing. I would use this if you have a color cast in an image that is really just beating the junk out of you and you don't know how to do how to deal with it. And when you edit, when you actually go through and you modify these channels, you want to make sure that you do them very slowly with uh, not a big heavy hand, because if you get a heavy hand, you're going to get a really odd looking photograph. And you have to understand a little bit about colors and color channels before you can edit them. So essentially what you're editing here is a mask of a given color. So if you're in the red channel, it's almost like you're editing the colors within the mask of the red channel here. If we were to go ahead and look at just this red channel here and take away your blues and your yellows here, this is essentially what you're editing when you move the red adjustments. You're adding uh, different colors to these white areas of just this red channel. And then likewise, just this green channel and likewise, just this blue channel. And that's kind of how this is interacting. It's allowing you to use those tones and those colors that are within those individual channels so that you can modify your image accordingly. Notice how our blue sky up there isn't really changing much because it's not allowing that because the, that doesn't really even exist in this red channel. Look at the red channel. See how it has black up here in the red channel, right up here? That basically means that when you're in this output channel as red and you're affecting that channel mixer, you're not going to affect anything that is in black in this basically mask that is showing us in monochrome what the red channel actually does. While I did say that this is good for precise masking, Let's show you that here real quick, okay? So let's go ahead and go into our channels. And let's say, you know, we know for a fact that our sky is blue, but we want to make a really good mask for just our blues. And maybe this wouldn't be the case where you want to come in here and try to use your uh, selective tools in order to do this. You can use channels to make very precise selections. So let's say I go into the channels mode here and I click on just the blue. I don't want to see anything else. I just want to see the blue channel. If I go into the channel mixer here, I can change this to monochrome so that I'm only affecting lights and darks now because when it comes to masking, we only want to affect lights and darks. I can say that I want those blues to be really dark and not include a whole lot of my green channel or my red channel, but make that blue channel really dark 
so that when I make a mask for this, I can actually make a very precise mask for all the things that are blue in this image by using, especially coming in and using this constant. This is basically how dark or how light that mask is going to be when we talk about the constants here. It's the presence of white and the presence of black in the given channel that we're working on. So if we were to go ahead and reduce this down and make that darker, now what I can do is I can come up to my select, go to color range, and I can select this color range right here and select the fuzziness on how much I want that mask to actually select and press OK. So now if I go ahead and press the RGB button right here, that's going to let me see all of my channels. I'll go back to my layers palette. I'll turn off the channel mixer because I don't want to see it. And now let's say I wanted to make a curves adjustment layer for just my blues. I can come in here and say, and it's going to make that curves adjustment layer with a mask for my blues. So I can make some pretty extreme masks here for individual areas of my images, especially when it deals with individual colors. So while I don't necessarily think the color mixer is the, the channel mixer is the best thing for modifying colors because there's so many other things that we can use for modifying colors, especially things like color balance for this case, it is very good for making masks of individual areas of color. The next tool we have when it comes to precision, inherent precision, is the curves adjustment layer for color editing. And you might be thinking, why would you use this for, can you even use the curve for color editing? Yes, you can. You can because you can actually go into those individual colors just like you can in the channel mixer. The thing about the curves adjustment layer that I really like about the curves adjustment layer is because it is a jack of all trades. You can modify tones and you can also modify individual colors. I think that the curves adjustment layer typically works best when you already have a precise mask for it. That's why in terms of precision, it's in the moderate level, but you can get pretty precise with what it is that you're actually adding your colors to. If we look at a curves adjustment layer, just to refresh your memory, a curves adjustment layer down here, this is your darkest darks, this is your midtones, and this is your lightest light areas, okay? So if you were to go into the individual colors, let's say we go into the color red, we can basically say of this entire image, I want more red in the mid-tone areas of my image or less red in the mid-tone areas of my image. But if we want to get even more precise with it, we can say, you know what? I don't want that to affect my shadows at all. So I'll bring this up down here and I don't want it to affect those highlight areas at all. So I'm really just adding or subtracting that red from the mid-tone areas of my image by making a, a very precise curve for where I want those to, to be added to my image. So on this curves adjustment layer, in the red channel here, what you'll see here is that this is split in half. And we're gonna talk a lot about uh, the way complementary colors work in palette effects. But up here, if you move this up, the whole image is gonna get more red. If you move it down, the whole image is gonna get more cyan because on the color wheel, they are opposites on the color wheel. In the green channel, move this up, it's gonna get more green. Move it down, it's gonna get more magenta. In the blue one, move this up, it's gonna get more blue. Move it down, it gets more yellow. So you see that this is a complementary color uh, idea here. So what we can say with this is we're in the blue channel, we can say, you know what, I need my highlights to have a little bit more blue in them, but please don't affect my midtones or my shadow areas. I now have my highlights where I can add more blue or more yellow to them. So if I wanted to offset the color of this yellow here in the foreground, I'm just adding that to the highlight areas and I'm being very precise with it. The beauty of this is that I know what color I'm editing. So I think that this is a little bit more precise than something like the color balance tool because I get to say what exactly that midtone or that highlight or that shadow is that is receiving more blue or more red or more green or cyan, magenta or yellow. Where this really comes in is with a very powerful mask. So let's say if we took maybe the mask that we used before with the channel mixer, with that area up here in our blue uh, sky area up there, we could then make a very precise mask to edit just that area of color. So that's where the curves adjustment layer can be very nice is when it's used in conjunction with masks for individual colors, which is one of the most effective ways to edit individual colors in your image because you become a painter with color by adding a little bit more color to this color in just the mid-tones, highlights, or shadows of that color. It takes a lot of practicing and there is a slight learning curve to using curves for color. So the next one, moving on down, we have selective 
color here. And selective color is a very powerful adjustment layer here. And it's very precise. And it's interesting because it doesn't work with a very heavy hand. And it allows you to go into not just your red, green, and blue channels, but your reds, your greens, your blues, your cyans, your magentas, your yellows. And it allows you to apply certain percentages of colors to those colors and not work with a very heavy hand. And what I mean by a heavy hand is that it doesn't work globally and it doesn't work very fast. It's very fine tuned refinement of colors. So if we have the selective color adjustment here, what you're going to see is you have a series of presets here if you want to use presets. But the big thing right here is colors. You have your yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, and even your whites, neutrals, and your blacks here. Those are considered areas where you can add colors. So you get some really nice fine-tuned editing here with colors. Let's go into the color blue here, just because we have a lot of blue here and you can really see it. What this is saying is if I move this up, it's going to increase the percentage of cyan in my color blue. If I reduce it, it's going to increase the amount of red in my blues by removing cyan. See here, cyan, negative 100%. Basically, remove the cyan from the color blue, and this is the color that would result. So it doesn't exactly change your color to red. It doesn't change your blue color to red at all by any stretch of the imagination. It removes a percentage of cyan or adds a percentage of cyan to your color blue. So if you say, let's, re let's add a percentage of cyan here to really blue up this area here, but now we go into the magentas. You can add a percentage of magenta to your color blue, or you can remove a percentage of magenta, basically adding green to your image. See how this works? We talk about color theory a lot in the palette effects panel. And what you're seeing here is a direct relationship in complementary colors. Because what we say when we're reducing magenta by negative 100% is we're adding green to our image essentially. By removing magenta, from our image, we, the result is going to be more green. Okay. And then over here with our yellows, if we increase the yellows and our blues, notice how our blues start to get a little bit toned down. If we decrease the amount of yellows, we're removing the amount of yellow that is in that color blue and allowing that color blue to just lift and get a little bit more enriched. It's a richer color of blue. And we can do that for all of our individual colors. So we can come in here to maybe the color yellow and we can say, okay, yellow, let's go ahead and uh, decrease the amount of yellow in the color yellow by coming down here. And what we see there is that maybe we have a little bit of magenta that's coming through there. So we'll add a little bit of green to it and maybe we'll remove some of the red from it by adding some cyan to it. And now we're getting some really nice color balance in our color yellows. Now there's other colors in here too. We can go into say the color reds and we can maybe decrease the amount of cyan that's in the color red and maybe increase the magenta. So we're enriching these tones. We're enriching these colors with, uh, through the use of the removal and the addition of color. So what you have to say to yourself is, okay, if I say negative 20%, 28% cyan, what is my result? Well, you're just basically removing cyan to get a little bit more red. If I increase the cyan there, I'm reducing the amount of red there by adding cyan to the color red. So this is a, it's a really nice tool and it can be very precise, but what holds it back from being extremely precise and what sets it apart from something like the hue saturation adjustment layer is a very simple thing like an eyedropper. If Adobe would just realize that maybe just a little eyedropper tool here would be nice so that when you click it, it would change to the color that you want to edit. That would be awesome, but they don't. So now we have probably the most precise color adjustment tool on the planet when it comes to Photoshop. And it's probably the most popular and most widely used when it comes to color manipulation because of how easy it is to use and because of the amount of control you get over that color. Extreme control and very, very precise. So what do we have here? Well, if you see here, we have our reds, our yellows, our greens, our cyans, our blues, and our magentas, just like we did before. But instead of being able to add or, sub add or subtract color within that color, we get three different adjustments, three color property adjustments, the hue, the saturation, and the lightness. What is hue? Well, what color is that color? That's hue. Saturation, how potent is that color and lightness or shades what shade of color is that how much white is present or how much black is present in that color 
The really nice thing that we get here, though, is that we don't have to guess where our reds, our greens, our yellows, and our blues, and our magentas are. We can take this thing right here, which is called your targeted adjustment tool, and we can click on something like our color here. And look what that is. That's blue. What color is this? That color is cyan. What color is this? That color is yellow. And notice that as you do this, it's going to change over all of your different colors here. So when we come into this, we can go into our color blues and we can say, you know what? I want the, the hue of this blue to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to move this over. And what it's essentially doing is it's moving the color blue around the color wheel to adapt to the properties of another color. So it's telling all of the blue in your image, become more blue, become more like this color on the color wheel. So you're essentially kind of mixing colors on like you would on the color wheel. We can increase the saturation of that color blue, and we can increase how much lightness or darkness is in that color blue. Now, one of the really cool things that is also in the hue saturation adjustment layer, which gives you a whole nother level of precision, is right down here. This area right here is telling you what your blues are. Your blues are right here in this area, but you can get more finite with that. You can increase where your blues are going to affect by increasing the stretch and the spread. This is kind of like blend if, if you consider that. This is like color blend if. You're basically saying, hey, blue, I need you to spread your wings a little bit more. I need you to select a little bit more of the colors in the area. Now, would you want it to go all the way over here to your yellows and your greens? Probably not because look what how that is affecting our yellows and our greens now. But you can get even more precise and more finite with it and make sure that it doesn't even bleed into your magentas by moving it over here. Now, this area right here is the color that it's selecting for the color blue. You can make it more strict. You can say, this is what I want you to say blue is. You can even move this around by clicking in the middle of it and moving to where you want blues to be selected on your image. So this is where precise, very finite color adjustments come in. We could then still stay stuck on this, on this target adjustment tool and click on our yellows. And with our yellows, we can say, you know what, yellow, I need you to get a little bit more towards the blue side here or the red side here. Let's change your hue a little bit. Let's decrease your saturation and let's increase your lightness here because I want you to be uh, more of a rocky granite color or something like that. If that's what we wanted to do, we could also spread its wings if we wanted to and make this branch out into our reds. We don't really want to go that far though, because then we're losing some of that saturation in our reds and in our greens, but we can fine tune that and say, this is the color yellow here. This is what I want you to say yellow is. And we can get that really, really refined onto where exactly we want that yellow to be affected in our image. So you see what we have here is we have the color properties. We have the ability to say, hey, yellow, turn a different color, uh, get more saturated, become more potent, or I need you to have a little bit more lightness or darkness in you. Um, and then we can even say, hey, yellow, I need you to change your property altogether by clicking down here. Now you're going to see this colorize option here. If you press colorize, what that's going to do is it's actually going to change the color of your entire image globally based on this hue adjustment here. Where is your hue set to? We're basically making a monochromatic looking image this way. This can be really good for color grading. I actually really do enjoy color grading this way because of the way it preserves the tones and the, and the luminance values underneath the image. So if you're wondering what that colorize button does, that's what colorize does. Now you don't just have to go into your RGBs, your reds, your blues, your greens, cyans, magentas, and yellows. You can also adjust the master, which is your luminance channel. You can make the whole image more vibrant. I wouldn't suggest doing it, but you could. Okay, with great power comes great responsibility. Don't do it if, uh, if it doesn't need to be done. And you can change all the hues in your image. This is like um, the Wizard of Oz. This is the horse of a different color here. This is that clever trick that they did in the Wizard of Oz. When I was a kid, you're like, whoa, how did they do that? That's how they did it. They just changed the hue slider on the entire video. So in that PDF, you're going to see a chart and that chart spells out exactly what areas in your image uh, are best affected by the individual adjustment layer. Now it doesn't necessarily tell you which one is best. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sit here in a pulpit and say the best color adjustment tool is the hue saturation adjustment. And that's not necessarily the case. The best tool is the right tool for the job. And now that you know how each one of these individual tools is used, you can use them better in your color adjustments as you edit your images. We talked about precision. Each one of these tools is has a level of precision and some of them are much more precise than others when it comes to color 
editing, okay? Actually editing and, and, and precisely and accurately rendering color. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, how well you might be able to use the channel mixer, okay? I'm talking about how well can you select a color and modify that color. And with that being said, the most precise tool when you know how to use it is the hue, saturation, and luminance and lightness tool because of the ability to change the color of the color, change the potency of the color, add a, a shade to that color or a tint to that color. So we make that, that color lighter or darker. Um, the ability to even spread the wings of that color, to make that color affect more than just the color yellow, but colors that are on the sides of it as well. So this was your first special feature for the palette effects release. I hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to download it and the PDF to go along with it because um, this is some really important stuff to get a grip on before you start diving into palette effects. Again, my name is Blake Grudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. I certainly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Mm -hmm.